This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. You know who I can do without? I can do without the people in the video store. Which ones? All of them. This is Massive Late Fee with Mike and Mark. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Massive Late Fee. My name is Mark. With me as always is my co-host Mike. How you doing, Mike? Uh, Not too bad, Mark. How about yourself? Good. We're doing good here today, this week, at Massive Late Fee, where we talk all about streaming shows and movies and anything that we really care to talk about. And apropos of that, we're switching things up a little bit. We're going to try a slightly different format, uh, more of a no format kind of uh, thing, and we'll see where that takes us. But uh, apropos of that, we're going to start with the Parents Guide game uh, this week. So, Mike, I've, I've got one here pulled up already for you. Uh, <laughs> happy Thanksgiving, Mark. Oh, yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah, this comes out on Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving out there, everybody. Uh, I hope you I hope you enjoy your, your turkey day if, or whatever. I don't know. Can we say Thanksgiving? Is that something that's still allowed to be I, said? I assume it's okay still, yeah. <laughs> Although what really annoys me is people call it Friendsgiving, which really bothers me. Oh, for why? I don't know why it just annoys me. Just to like, just take like a. I mean, first of all, Thanksgiving is like constantly being shit on as it is. You know, I oh, mean, yeah. you have Halloween and then like uh, Thanksgiving. Oh, Christmas! I mean, it's just like they, and it's really in a sense probably like one of the most uh, the most revered holidays. At least it should be because it's all about giving thanks. Yeah, and everyone just like skips over it. Like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, fuck this holiday. But, but yeah, so uh, we are going to do the um, Parents' Guide game. You want to go first, Mark? Yeah, so the first, <laughs> under frightening and intense scenes, this is maybe my favorite my favorite clue ever in the uh, in the IMDb guide. Wow, Fright- that's, 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 that, that's saying quite a bit. Frightening and intense scenes. Lots of intense scenes, which can also be frightening. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? What kind of an idiot wrote that one? I don't know. I mean, that's, you're basically just defining the section. But here's a re- here's a real one in that's in that section. the The two main characters are tortured, but the scene is not very long, and both escape relatively unharmed. Hostile, <laughs> hostile. No, although a decent guess because obviously torture, hostile. This clue under sex and nudity will give you the decade from that the movie's in. You know, actually, I think I already guessed it. it, is, it is it Celtic Pride? No, no. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I thought that was it, but I guess we're wrong. At the very beginning, we see a topless woman laying on a bed. Her bare breasts are seen. She then gets up and starts sniffing cocaine off a glass table. She then goes out to her balcony and looks over the edge of the railing. We see both of her bare breasts. She then climbs up on top of the railing, and the wind blows her nightgown open, revealing both of her bare breasts again. I'm always happy when they show both of the bare breasts because it just feels kind of incomplete if there's only one. Like, doesn't don't you just feel like, eh, that's, that's just weird? Yeah, I agree. I don't want to see. I want to see them both. Both or none. I mean, just one is just an odd. Uh, it's got to be. It's got to be an even number. I think. Yes. Oh, this sounds familiar. I know it's not Forrest Gump because uh Which is know, why Total game. Recall is such a put off because Yeah, it really is like, oh that's that's kinda nice, but I mean at the same time it's like no too much. That's too many. Yeah, exactly. Um hmm. Uh, I I know it's not correct, but I'll guess Forrest Gump. No, I know where you're going there with the railing when she stands up and over that that it makes sense. I know that scene, but no, it's it's not that. Um, yeah, I don't think for, and Forrest and Bubba were not tortured. <laughs> no. Uh, let's see. Uh, four women are shown nude in a scene. A couple women are topless, and we see their bare breasts. One of the women takes off her top, and we see her bare breasts. They like that so, phrase a lot. So we're seeing all six of these bare breasts, right? Not like some weird combination. Right, correct, yeah. It's not like, uh, yeah, we'd see one of a uh, couple of women and then one of them, like, to try to make a set. No, it's 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 all, it's all, all of them. Huh. Um, I don't think this is correct, but uh, Showgirls? No. 
Uh, here's uh, maybe probably the last one I'm going to do in sex and nudity, although there are a few other ones. Uh, a man says that his daughter was making pornographic videotapes with her friends. We later see one of them. I assume they're talking about Jeez. the tapes. So we later see I, I one of those tapes. Is this uh, oh, is this Lethal Weapon? It is Lethal Weapon. See, I've, I've, I've actually never seen the entire thing of uh, the first Lethal Weapon. Like, I've only seen parts of it. But I've seen, you know, I, obviously I, I've seen enough to uh, no, recall the, the scenes. In it. <laughs> yeah, I only saw it on, like, I only saw it on, like, regular TV. So mm -hmm. I didn't even see... I know there's like a part with like a tape, but I've never, I've never seen that part. Yeah. Very, very, very good. There's uh, another, there's another one that's kind of funny in here too. Uh, I'm trying to find it. There's, but there's one where it's basically like, um, uh, I don't know. I can't remember now, but something about a guy's uh, nuts getting ripped off or something. <laughs> Jeez, I know Gary Busey's in that movie, so there's definitely some weird nut action going on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, let me tell you. You know, Gary Busey, I felt, could have been in a lot more, like, action movies as a villain. Like, he was in Under Siege. He's really good in that. And he mm -hmm. obviously has, like, a great, like, uh, terrifying, like, you know, a streak to him. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's, Gary Busey is the perfect, like, insane villain. Or insane friend. He was on a uh, black sheep. <laughs> right. As, like the insane like guy. He's a, I he, love him in point. He would be point a good break, insane doctor. <laughs> yeah. Like maybe to interact with Liam Neeson's character in that uh, sketch he's working on. Yeah. Or or maybe uh, an insane uh, police officer. He'd be good at that. Yeah. He's, I mean, obviously he had a head injury, which probably, you know, contributed heavily to his insanity, but. He definitely be good at some uh, insane, uh, insane stuff. I think was he like a very good actor before the head injury? He was. He was in the buddy, the uh, not the yeah, the Buddy Holly. Story. Buddy Holly, yeah. and he played Buddy. He played Buddy Holly. I mean, one of the best acting performances I've ever seen in my life. He's fantastic in that movie. Yeah, I mean, it, what's funny is, uh, I mean, Gary Busey has had like some head injuries, but. I don't hear him like going out like doing all this creepy shit like all these other people are doing. You know, even him with like a head injury like seems to be you know a decent person. I mean, obviously you can't control that you have a head injury. Right. Yeah. True. Yeah. I, I know. I've always felt bad for him because I mean he he literally did get brain damage from this motorcycle yeah, yeah. accident. I, mean, like, I don't know if he wore a helmet or not. I think it's insane to ride a mo motorcycle period without a helmet. It's just wow. It's I, I don't understand that at all. Yeah, he was not wearing a helmet, and uh, yeah, got some pre pretty bad. Uh, but yeah, like like you said, you know he's he hasn't been me too. He's not fucking out there molesting women and shit. So you know that's definitely something in his right. favor. Yeah, I mean, even though he is like you know wacky, I guess he he seems just like a decent person. So you know he's yeah. Whenever I see him like at a reality show, he's always trying to help other people out, that kind of stuff. You know, so so good for Gary Busey. Yeah, I don't I don't mind his uh, insane rants. No. Are you ready? Are you ready for my round? Oh, I am. All right. Teens drinking at a party. American Pie. <laughs> no. Wouldn't it be great if that wasn't? You're like, oh, I remember that movie. They were <laughs> drinking. <laughs> there was a lot of drinking going on at that party. Uh, teens smoking what appears to be marijuana at a party. What else it would be? I have no idea. Right. Uh, I know it's a fictional movie, but they're still like you know, kind of like couching it. And like, <laughs> oh, it could be, it could be something else. Right. Maybe they're smoking catnip. You never know. <laughs> uh, oh, we just got a cat too. By the way, we got a uh, we got a cat this week. Oh, nice. Uh, I, I feel like I just want to talk about the cat at this point, <laughs> um, but I'll save it till after this uh, game. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you all about the cat after the game. Um, so I will say, can't hardly wait. No. Okay. And this is a point where I realize that there's not a lot of good clues in this. Because, mm -hmm. like, much like your RoboCop thing, cop thing the other day, uh, most of the clues uh, involve uh, the name of the character. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, it's very obvious. Uh, so, here's the next clue someone is punched in the face. Mm, punched in the face, we're at a party, smoking some doobies, I will say. Poss uh, yeah, possibly. <laughs> 16 candles. No. Someone is punched in the face. Again? Oh, I just read that one. Yeah. <laughs> At least two different instances. 
But why male models? <laughs> Oh my god. David Duchovny is so perfect in that too. I I I think I told you this. I heard in the audio commentary of Zoolander that Ben Stiller's like, yeah, that wasn't written in the script. I just I just like lost my place in the script and actually asked it again. And David he's like, but David Duchovny's reaction was so priceless we just left it in. Cause he's like, Are are you kidding me? We we just went over this. <laughs> Someone is punt. No, uh, some rough play during a basketball game. Ooh, okay. There's a basketball. Oh, um, the uh, basketball diaries. No. Okay. Close though. Various instances of sexual innuendo. Ooh. Teen Wolf. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Do you like how I claimed that was close to the basketball diaries? <laughs> Well, there is basketball in both movies. I just thought it'd be funny in my own head to say it, and I'm like, yeah, I guess I guess you'll hear that one. Uh, yeah, I once once basketball was introduced, it, it was easier to get to. Oh, I thought we were going to talk about this cat here. Yeah. So uh, the well, cat... by, by the way, the clues for that one are really bad. Like, there's no mention of styles in it whatsoever, or uh, riding on top of a uh, you know truck. How do you not mention styles? I mean, that's like that might literally be the first thing you see in the movie. Styles coming up to his house. Yeah, I, that's like talking about Fast Times at Ridgemont High and not mentioning <laughs> yeah. Damone. I was just saying, do you think they would hang out, or do they just hate each other, the two characters? Ooh, uh, I feel like they'd have. I feel like at first they would have like a, a a kind of a rivalry, and then eventually they would have a grudging respect for one another. And then they just fuck. <laughs> I think uh, Damone is way creepier, <laughs> like oh, 100 percent yes. more. Yes, Damone, he's like got that but, like, hey, what's going on, girl? <laughs> and he like fucks his own friend over at the restaurant, you know? Oh yeah, well, you owe or me for like, this one. Or he, he's like taking, like he's trying to like you know steal her, quote unquote, from like his friend and stuff. Mm-hmm. A very See the case uh, right through that shit. A very young pre her dad getting uh, murdered. <laughs> Jennifer Jason Lee, right? Yeah, and the reason I'm laughing is when I hit the push to talk button, it sounds like a slide whistle. So it's like <laughs> murder. <and you're>, <laughs> oh god, poor Vic Morrow. But this cat. Speaking of people who are dead, uh, this this cat is a. Uh, her name is Peaches. She's a 12 year old cat, and uh, her previous owner died, and she was basically kind of abandoned. Um, so she's a, uh, Persian cat and both my son and my wife are incredible. Persian, huh? Is that the word you're using? <laughs> she's Iranian, but <laughs> she's, uh, we, we gave her a bunch of money, uh, when, uh, we signed that nuclear deal. <clears throat> it's a very bad deal. Um, but, uh, my wife and my son are both really allergic to cats. So we need like a kind of a hypoallergenic breed and, uh, you know, Persians are one of the ones that are, are, or no, are they? She's, she's not, I'm sorry. She's not Persian. She's Siamese. Yeah. See a, per, a Persian. I think they're like very furry. I'm, I think yeah. they'd be the opposite of people. Yeah. She's yeah, a Siamese are. Yeah. She's got like, she's had, she has, I guess the Siamese breed has less of uh, some and sort dander. of, yeah. And some sort of uh, protein or whatever that, that can be, people uh. can be allergic to. But anyway, so it's working out well. Cause they're not, they don't seem to be allergic to her. Uh, she's got some stomach problems though. Um, so we put uh probiotic stuff on her food, uh, cause she's got some, some, some bad, uh, stomach problems. She, <laughs> she, I was sitting, she was sitting next to me. I was petting her and then she just audibly farts <laughs> and it's, <laughs> it's terrible too. Like I've never heard a cat actually like where they fart, where you can hear it. Yeah, I think I had like once, and it was like even the cat like looked at me like in a weird like, what the fuck was that? You know, they, they're not used to it. <laughs> but yeah, this cat has got some stomach issues, but we're you know we're uh, we're doing well, and she's she's getting used to the dog. Luckily, we have our dog is like the most docile dog ever, um, and she's batted it in the face a couple times just because she's like you know stay away from me kind of thing because the dog's curious. But uh, but they they seem to 
right now, because we only had her for a few days, they seem right now to be ignoring each other pretty well. Uh, and, yeah, it's probably uh, the best indication that they'll get along. Yeah, and then eventually I think they'll, yeah, start to, to get along a little bit more. That's cool. Yeah, I, I, I like the way Siamese cats look. I've always heard they're mean or that they can, like, get deaf very easily. Uh, have you found that to be true in the limited time you've had her? Well, she seems pretty friendly. She doesn't, like, she likes, she's particular. So, and, and she's 12, so obviously she was raised yeah, by yeah. somebody else. But she likes to be held for a limited amount of time. And then she doesn't bite you, but she'll kind of, she'll put her teeth on your hand when she wants to be done. You know, just kind of not, not even like a nibble. But like just a warning like, kind of deal. Yeah, just like a touch to your hand, like, hey, I'm ready to get down. And um, so she seems fairly friendly. Now, she does have a, some sort of, uh, I think it's a polyp in her ear. So you have to be real careful uh, touching her left ear. We're going to uh, take her to the vet and get that surgically removed so um, so it's not bothering her nice. anymore. That's sweet. Uh, we, we recently got a cat, too. Um, our neighbors, who are uh, terrible people, <laughs> they basically, like, abandoned this cat and, oh. like, two more, like, when they moved. And mind you, they probably had, like, an equal number of cats and then some. Oh, They're, God. like, animal hoarders or something. Apparently, they had, like... Uh, like, I don't know how many chihuahuas, but they all, like, lived, lived inside the house, and they just let them, like, go to the bathroom on these pads, you know? Oh, awful. Like, pee pads or something? Yeah. Yeah, so, like, uh, so I was in the garage. This was, you know, a few few months ago, but now that I have the opportunity to talk about my cat, I'll uh, I'll be all over this one. <laughs> um, Yeah, so she was, like, I was in the garage, and, like, uh, we, we let one of our cats come out, and our cat, Bodie, he likes to explore the garage. So I let him come out, and then all of a sudden, this other cat, like, comes out. Like, it just, like, meows at him. I'm like, oh, shit. So I grabbed him and, like, threw him inside real quick. Mm. And, you know, we got her some food and stuff, and uh, you know, she's like inside the house now. We've had her because she's very small. I'm like, oh, I, she can't be a year old. That's how small this cat is. Um, but we took her to the vet. They said she's like six. Oh, so wow. She's probably, like, so she was probably like malnourished this entire time. And yeah. so, sure enough, you know, when she eats with the other cats, like she'll just tear through all the food. Like she'll go from bowl to bowl, eating as much food as she can. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so you know, they pretty much get along, except for uh, the other day. Uh, apparently, uh, our cat Bodie was trying to rape her. Oh God. They're both, which is weird because they're both fixed. Okay. So I'm assuming it's a dominance thing, but uh, yeah, I've had a lot of fun calling him uh, Bill Cosby, uh, Vince Champ, uh, <laughs> you know, all these fun names over the, uh, the past few uh, days. <laughs> oh, look, there's Harvey Weinstein right now. Did, uh, do you guys, uh, do you have your cats declawed or no? Um, we do, but with Mabel, she, that's the girl cat's name. Uh, she actually, uh, is, was already not declawed mm. and due to her age, we wouldn't declaw her. I mean, just, she's six. That seems a little old, you know, and usually by that age, they've learned how to like, you know, not be a psychopath with them. You know, she'll still try and scratch stuff up, but she's right. not like, like a kitten running around, like tearing everything open. I mean, I would think from the age, you know, that's a little old, but yeah, our, the ones that we've had from kittens, we have had the declaw just because, I mean. I know a lot of people say it's cruel or whatever, but I mean, it doesn't seem to bother them that much. And I'm sure some like person listening to this is just like, you know, raging right now. But I mean, it's, it seems like a better compromise. They don't tear our stuff up, you know, and it doesn't seem to hurt them too much. I feel like it's sort of like uh, getting circumcised when, when you do it, when they're, when they're kittens, I don't think it's a big deal. Now this, this cat that we have peaches is not declawed and we're not going to do it because at this point she's, she's 12 years old and she's, you know, she's lived her whole life with, with oh, yeah. her fried claws, so, yeah. I can't imagine a vet would even do that. Right. Um. So, you know, obviously we wouldn't do it now, but I I wouldn't have a problem declawing a cat. I think, you know, for the most part, I think a lot of the reasons that they don't want you to do it is because of, um, is because if they get out, you know, and things like that to defend themselves. Yeah, or, yeah, for sure. I mean, they can fight with their back claws a little bit, but uh, seeing our, our, under, our declawed cats fight each other is hilarious. Like, it's like... <laughs> It's like a slap fight, you know? It's right. Fun. But yeah, so I uh you know, I was just curious about that. Um what have you been what have you been doing as far as like because I, I I well I guess I'll just I will just go. I was gonna I was gonna do the courteous thing and <laughs> say hey talk about <laughs> your stuff, but uh but I kinda wanna steer this where I want it to go. So Okay, that's I'm fair. Just <laughs> I, I've been I've been bumping around online a lot uh, lately this week, and one of the things that I I have like a weird fascination of are impressionists. Oh, really? I, I, I feel the opposite. Like I like whenever I see an impressionist do an impression, 
or like a person who does a cartoon voice do that voice. I just feel cringe, like for some reason. See, it's it's like a magic trick to me in in, in certain ways, and you have got to be you got to be good at it though. Like seeing a bad impressionist is just <laughs> like seeing a bad comedian. It's just like it's oh my god, it's horrible. But would uh, you lump a ventriloquist into this? No, I, ventriloquists aren't interesting to me. <laughs> What about if there are a uh, janitor in high school? <laughs> yeah, that that is pretty interesting. <laughs> That's one of the the oddest things I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Oh, that janitor. Um, but yeah, so I I I don't know why it's a weird thing, but I just I don't know. I find it really interesting to to hear people do impression impressions and I try to do some here and there, but, uh, there's this dude, uh, Ross Mark. Yep. Which ones do you do, Mark? Um, well, like everyone, like I think in the world, even people that don't try to do impressions, I can, I, I attempt Christopher Walken. Um, and I can do like, uh, Ross Perot, like, uh, George W. Bush. Um, People that sound, you know, you know, it's funny. Uh, we did Junior for Retro Late Fee. And that's not funny. The whole, no, it was not at all. But, uh, but the whole time I, uh, I was doing an Arnold Schwarzenegger impression, which of course everyone also does. Yeah. I think every male our age is, you know, it, it's, it's like, it, it's impossible not to make the impression while you're watching like one of his movies, you know? Yeah. And then there's I, so many great catchphrases to use too. It's just it's it's an inevitable. I pointed out in the actual review. How do you not? He's pregnant. How do they not work in the line? It's not a tumor. <laughs> yeah, that that wasn't like a, a lot of his catchphrases will carry over, but that one only had its uh, very limited run, unfortunately. But I pointed out in the in the in the podcast that I've never heard anyone do a Danny DeVito impersonation. And it seems like yeah, yeah, his voice point. should be impersonated. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a very distinctive voice. I mean, you could hear, you could tell just by. I mean, some people like have super distinctive voices. This is mm-hmm. one of them. Like, uh, there's this guy in the Wire. I, I don't know his name in real life, but his character's name is Herc. Okay, and he's actually he's in the Irishman, and I, I, I he's actually made up quite a bit, so he doesn't look like himself at all. He looks a lot older. But I heard the voice, and instantly I'm like, oh, that's that's got to be Herc. And sure enough, it was him. Like I'm. My wife can look at anyone's face, like in a, who's been in the movie for one frame, and recognize them anywhere. She's amazing at that. But like me, it's always a sound, like a voice. I, I'm much better at identifying voices than you know. Maybe that's why I don't like uh, impressionists as much. Maybe I can tell if they're not quite where I want them to be. Yeah, well, that's the thing is when you hear a bad one, it's it's really bad. I think that guy's name is was Dominic uh, Lombardozzi or something like that. Yeah, something like something like that. Yeah, Lamborghini, but um. But yeah, so like it's weird that no one does a Danny DeVito. But uh, there's this guy. Well, first of all, uh, why don't you be the first person to do it right now? I can't, I tried on the other podcast, and I just <laughs> I can't. It's I can't do it. Maybe and that's why. Maybe that's why no one does it because it's like impossible to imitate for some reason. <laughs> See, I think that's funnier. Kind of, sometimes when someone does a terrible impression. <laughs> Like, I thought it'd be funny one time if, like, my friend Matt and I did, like, a sketch of, like, these Australian, like, police officers. Uh-huh. But just because because I do such a terrible Australian accent, it'd just be the funniest thing to me. <laughs> like, I would just, like, that would amuse me, I think, and no one else. So the, the closest I think I got was, it was like, hey, Riga, why don't you get to, <laughs> get in the car? You know, or something. It's like, you know, it's just generic New York, is, you know, as close as I can get. You know, I think you need to start with your Tony Dan's impression and then kind of work from there. Because oh, you kind of have, have a similar quality in your impression, you know? Because mm-hmm. you did do our, your Tony Dan's uh, the other day on one of our shows. Yeah. But I, mean, I think that's the same. Because he's got that kind of, I mean, he's got the kind of quiet tone to it, you know, he starts off with. Mm-hmm. And Danny DeVito does kind of talk like that, especially on All He Said in Philadelphia. He has like that almost like seductive like quality with his voice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yes. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, I really think that would be a good base. I think if you started there, you'd get there pretty quickly. He's got to have like a short, thick cock, right? I, I, I mean, look at him. Come on. <laughs> but I, so I was watching different impressionists for whatever reason, and I think it showed up as a on YouTube as like a suggested thing, and I just went down a deep dive of different impressionists. But uh, there was there was one with uh, Al Pacino was on. I think it was Conan. And 
Kevin Spacey was on with him and Kevin Spacey was doing his his Al Pacino impression. And of course, Al Pacino was like laughing his ass off. And I, I was I just sat there. And I was thinking, you know, no amount of 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 young boy rape will ever be able to take away <laughs> that, <laughs> that memory of Al Pacino. <laughs> Like he'll still be able to get joy out of uh, hearing uh, someone do an impersonation. <laughs> so Can you know, find out about El Pacino. Hopeful. Yeah, what's? Up? I feel that he got typecast very early on in his career, and he's like an amazing actor who really uh, could have done a lot better movies. Oh, like he was a- obviously in like a. He was obviously well. I'm not even talking about his later, like you know, uh, De Niro esque, uh, you know, take. You know the uh, tangent that he took. Mm-hmm. I mean, like if you think about it, his first movie is like Reservoir Dogs, or not Reservoir Dogs, Dog Day Afternoon. Yeah, I mean, or at least it's one of, the, one of the first ones. That and he was was he in the Deer Hunter as well? Um, I don't I don't think so. No, I don't think so. He was in the Godfather though. Yeah, so he's he's in the Godfather, Godfather Two, um, and and the, the uh, Dog Day Afternoon is like his first movie. So he's immediately typecast as like this action kind of tough guy, you know. And looking at the rest of his career, he's often playing like you know a tough cop or a tough criminal. He's Scarface, you know, these are his earliest movies. He's like this big violent action star and he's really a great actor. I, I feel that he could have done so much more. Yeah, I agree. I, I think he's, he, he goes kind of both ways, I guess. Like there, there are some movies he's in where he's just like over the top, you know, kind of stuff. But yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's like the devil's advocate. He, he plays that perfectly. You mm-hmm. know, he's like, over top he's funny he's you know menacing he's like you know i mean if the devil existed which it doesn't it would uh, be a perfect portrayal of such a character Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely but but yeah i agree i think i think he has a lot of um like he was in scarecrow this movie in the 70s with gene hackman and he's fantastic in that there's, there's a lot of movies where yeah i wish he hadn't gotten uh, typecast as this, you know, in, in the kind of... Which is hilarious, because he's a pretty diminutive person, from what I can tell. I mean, I don't mm-hmm. think he's, like, Danny DeVito level. Yep. No, I agree. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's just funny that there's someone so, like, smaller than average would, like, be this big action star, I guess. Which, in a lot of ways, I mean, his movies are, aren't quite, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, but they're, they're action movies. I mean, not the, well, no, not, not the Godfather, but I would say Scarface is definitely an action movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're they're... The Godfather is not a, not really an action movie, but there are there are elements I think that it has in common with action movies. Yeah, without the action parts of the Godfather, it would be nowhere near as good of a movie. Yeah, and and it's like uh, Scarface is similar in in a similar vein is kind of the same type thing. Yeah, and Bar- uh, Scarface, he had a base head wife whose uh, womb was polluted. <laughs> That's right. Did you ever hear that song by the Lonely Island? Yes. Yeah, I love that part so much. It's just so weird. Uh, but uh, yeah, he was. You know, did you ever see Insomnia, the Christopher Nolan movie? Yeah, I, I saw it. I, I think I saw it with you actually. Oh yeah, yeah, I think um, we did see it in the area. I, it was an okay movie. I think I'd have to watch it again. But I mean, it was just kind of a, again. He's like this kind of like tough, you know, toxic masculinity uh, cop guy. Right. Yeah, but he's you know he what one thing that I think that he does really well in that movie is he plays the like kind of slowly going nuts like he's not really yeah, oh, yeah. going he's, he's... insane but like because he can't fucking sleep <laughs> you know like he's yeah, that's just really, like the craziest premise like oh let's bring this guy out here to investigate and just you know he's not used to the light he'll, he'll never sleep right but he, he plays that like kind of coming unglued like slowly so it, yeah, he plays yeah, it really, really good, subtly man. and very well isn't Robert Williams in that movie too? Yeah, he's the antagonist. Yeah, Robert Williams was also a great actor, which mm-hmm. uh, which is kind of funny because I don't find his comedy funny at all. But I mean, I think he's a great dramatic actor. Like he was really good in the uh, Bobcat Goldthwait movie. Um, what was it? Um, uh, something about Father really? of the Year or something like that. World's Best Dad, I think it was called. Oh, okay. I don't know if you've seen those movies. They're really good. That and the uh, the one he did with uh, Joel Murray, God Bless America. That one's really good too. Oh yes, yep. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just, uh, just odd. That's another impersonation that a lot of people do because you know that's another easy one. Where Joel Murray? Yes. <laughs> my bro- my brother was at SNL. <laughs> ooh, ooh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, I don't, I don't think I know what he sounds like. 
<laughs> Joel Murray. I think that was a pretty damn good impression of him, actually. <laughs> One of my proudest joke moments, I guess, was uh, I can't remember what I was talking about, but Joel uh, Murray. No, I think I I was I think I I was in back when I I taught school, um, or you know like worked at the elementary school. I um I think. I was talking about, and I might have been talking about impressionists actually. But I was like, "Oh yeah, I, I can do uh, pretty good." But this time, this time it was the painters. <laughs> I was like, "I can do pretty good impressions," and um, so I go, uh, <clears throat> "My name is Franklin Pierce, Fourteenth President of the United States." He sounded just like that. <laughs> I think I heard you say that one before. Yeah, that, I, I I don't know. I think that's a, a, a I think it's a quality joke. You guys, uh, yeah, like that. that's a good joke. joke. But this guy from The Walking Dead, Ross Marquand, he he's like, he's been in a few different things. He's you know a, a professional actor, but he does impressions too. Just kind of like he's not a stand-up comedian. He doesn't do it in an act or anything. It's just like something that he can do. Uh, and actually, he's got a couple jobs that way. Um, uh, Hugo Weaving played the villain in called the red skull in captain america the first captain america movie did, did something happen to hugo weaving where his face was like uh, horribly scarred or something i don't think i've seen his face in a movie in like 15 years seriously he's either playing v or uh or like his Megatron. face face is covered with a skull red skull um no seriously i don't i really don't think i've seen his face in like 15 years i don't know not since the matrix no but he didn't want to come back for the, the, the like end game or whatever, the one of the Marvel movies. So they just got Ross Marquand. Yeah, he, he hates money. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe it's integrity. I don't know. Maybe he's like, oh, fuck you. Uh, no, he was in The Matrix 3, so no, it's not oh, integrity. Yeah, that's true. But he, so they, he didn't want to come back, so they just got Ross Marquand to do the voice. And he sounds just like him. How much does that make you hate Hugo Weaving, by the way? That he was in the Matrix Three. No, no, no. That he turned down. Like, what's the easiest like job? Seriously, just, oh, just use your own voice and speak lines in a studio. It was one scene. He went, from what I know, he was barely in the movie. Yeah, one scene. Yeah, yeah. It was one. Really scene. Gave him quite a bit of cash for that, though. You know, and residuals alone. Of course. Yeah, but no, you can probably didn't. call call over your phone and record your lines. Hugo, what's what's your problem? Yeah, you could be like uh, Bill Murray in the uh, the new Ghostbusters movie, where it's, where he just comes in and sits down. Comes in for one scene, just sits down. He's like, "Oh, you're not real Ghostbusters," and just sits down, and then gets killed. He probably just gives him one take too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he looks like he could not give a fuck at all. He's like, he's, he's like "Sorry, my goddamn brother Joel won't stop calling me." <laughs> Oh, did you hear that Bill Murray Bill Murray applied for a part-time job at a PF Chang's in an airport? No. Yeah. I don't know why. Oh, did, did he get it? I I I think he did it as a joke, basically, because I I could I would imagine that they'd be like, "Oh, yeah, we 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 will we'll hire you, Bill Murray." Yeah, I don't I don't get that joke. That's uh some of that classic Bill Murray humor, I guess. Yeah. I know you're like one of the only people I know that doesn't like him. I just don't understand. I don't. I don't get what the funny part is. Is what it is. Red Letter Media, uh, uh, Mike Stolklasa, who, by the way, I think you would love Red Letter Media. By the way, they have as much disdain for the entertainment industry as we do. But he, um, he said that I think Bill Murray seems like one of those guys that's like a lovable asshole. It's like, like he's like an asshole in real life, but you can't help but kind of like him as opposed to like, uh, he named off a couple different actors and stuff where, you know, they're assholes, but they're just assholes. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that is a lovable asshole. Um, cause I read some of the uh, divorce proceedings between his wife and him. <laughs> and, like, I think it's just stuff like he would like slap her in the face and like choke her in the head. <laughs> Holy shit. And yeah. Um, but what was funny is, like, I always see these things, like, online, especially on Reddit, like, oh, someone came up and said so-and-so, and then it was Bill Murray, and he said, you'll never believe this. <laughs> so I thought, be, I thought it'd be funny doing, like, a variation on it, like, doing, like, a, you know, I was married to Bill Murray, then he started punching me, and so-and-so, and then he said, no one will ever believe you. Oh, 
which is what the beam is because I don't think people are aware or maybe they just don't care or I mean who knows it's a divorce maybe I, I would hope someone wouldn't just make that up right I can uh, imagine it's two kids in real life or like the kids he has in Rushmore <laughs> I don't know why that just seems fitting <laughs> He's got his. He's got. He's like. I do like him in Rush War and the Royal Tenenbaums. Bombs. He's good in both of those. He has like fifteen kids too. That's like a lot. Too many. No, not fifteen, but he's got a lot. They're they're, they're big Catholics. Uh, Luke, Homer, Cooper, Jackson, Lincoln, and Cal. He has. Oh my God, are they all males? Yes, he has six sons. Oh, great. I can't wait till that next generation of uh, <laughs> low talent <laughs> douchebags gets in there <laughs> treading off his name from uh, a series he was in there 40 years ago. <laughs> hey, Uncle Joel. <laughs> yes, Connor, or whatever his name was. Oh, my God. Cooper. Uh, what's funny is Joel's not even like the most accomplished of the unknown uh murray brothers i would say oh, no, that i think brian dole for sure right yeah brian dole is probably the most and i think john is more than joel i think uh brian doyle was actually a writer that's what i would bill murphy was a uh a, 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 you know on the show there i remember bill murphy he was such a such a quality yeah. <laughs> player if, if i ever see bill if i ever see bill murphy in person that's my plan i would be like oh bill murphy i am your biggest fan <laughs> Because that would make me laugh, and that's all I care about in that exchange. I know Brian Doyle Murray wrote... Oh, wait a second, Bill. Is that your wife's blood on your knuckles? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's it's just ketchup. Oh, God. Hey, look, I'm going to go to ballet. Isn't that funny? But, but she said... Uh, no, no, ballet. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know he wrote Caddyshack. And I Congrats. think, yeah, like he he wrote it with um, uh, Doug Kenny from uh, the National Slater Lampoon. Kenny. I feel that um, uh, that's one of those movies that I saw it when I was young. I didn't find it funny at the time. Do you find Caddyshack funny? I find parts of it funny, but it's another one of those like we've talked think, about before. That yeah, I think when it first came out, it would be a lot funnier. Yeah. No, I bet I'd be. I bet I would have been a big Steve Martin fan if I was like, you know, like maybe twelve or thirteen when he came out. You know, I bet it would really like, you know, and they would like have the nostalgia factor. So I, I mean, if it were, I, I think if I were younger, I would probably like, you know, that kind of humor. But I don't know. Just starting to see it like in my twenties or thirties just never was funny to me. It's it's so, it's so hard to to um, you know, make, to, make it timeless. I think really the only yeah. comedy that I can think of that's timeless and will probably always be timeless. Is a jackass like the uh, jackass oh. movies and the jackass show? Phys- like that kind of physical comedy? Yeah, I agree. I remember <laughs> finding some videos that's consistently funny. You know, I could watch a first season one and laugh as hard as uh, you know. I don't know. I'll watch America's funny some video and I'll be like Robert De Niro in the uh, you know the movie. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, you no, know, he's in the front of the theater. I can't remember what it's called at the moment. Uh, where he's in the front of the theater. The, 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 oh, fear, keep fear. Oh God! Yeah. Like, I'll be I'll, I'll be like that guy watching America's Funniest Home Videos. Holy that's shit! Still, that's so funny. I just re- realized that I think he's watching Problem Child in that scene. Yeah, and even at the time, that movie was not that funny. No, Problem Child. God. But yeah, so that kind of stuff will, will always be funny. I feel, but yeah, I don't. I don't think uh, Bill Murphy and his uh, his brothers, who aren't even as funny as Bill Murphy, will uh, you know do it for me. You know, in one of the rare good jokes that was on uh, that was on Family Guy, um, <laughs> there's there's this scene. It's like a cutaway thing, obviously, but where they're um, oh, did yeah. it make did it make did it make sense in context? Uh no, not at all, of course. Uh but so it was uh, who's who's on first? So they were like cutting away to uh, you know that and. They're they're just actually doing the who's on first routine, like who's on first, yeah, you, know, you know, and everything. Um, I don't know. Uh, no, he's on third base. Um, and then they cl- it goes to somebody in the audience, and he turns to his friend and he goes, "Nothing will ever be funnier than misunderstandings." Right. And it's like that is kind of what it was like back then. Yeah, that's that's, that's the perfect explanation. <laughs> I think I think you had a falling out with a uh, family guy. Weren't you really hot on that when it first came out? And then you just kind of like uh, cooled down on it. 
Yeah, the first the like the first season maybe or two, I was uh I was super into it and then it just it gets it's one of those things where I, I think it would have been perfect as like a two or three season show and then just yeah. gone. But it's it's one of those things where the premise like went war thin very early on. Yeah, and South Park, like, you know, perfectly, like, you know, eviscerated the uh, whole concept of the show with their manatees picking random plot lines and jokes and that sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I feel there are some there are some episodes that I really love a lot of, of uh, Family Guy. Mm, yeah. Like, uh, the, one where, the one where they have, like, the Starship or Star Trek crew with them. That's a hilarious episode. That is funny, yeah. The one where they, uh, where they, it might be the same episode, but I don't, no, I don't think so. It's the one where they come up with Handy Quacks, the uh, cartoon about the handicapped ducks. <laughs> Yes. Like my wife and I like, you know, quote that to each other all the time. That, that's just a, such a hilarious episode. When yeah, they, I mean, I don't know. It's, when they when they play around with the the like the premise of the show, I think that's when it's it's best. Cuz like with with that Star Trek one, they just fought like it was basically just Stewie with the Star Trek crew like the entire episode. And like the Handy Quacks yeah. one, obviously they're they're poking fun at like their own writers room and writers rooms, you know, like that. Um right. and, and then there's an episode where Brian and Stewie get locked in a bank vault. That's kind of interesting and that's like they're the only two characters in there. It's a one like scene locked room the entire, you know, episode no cutaways or anything. Just like you know, it's just them. They really, uh, they really saved them the budget that week. Right, exactly. <laughs> but, but yeah, like, you know, when they play around a little bit, they can make some interesting episodes. And I think that Seth MacFarlane has some talent. Um, I hear, I don't watch yeah. it, but I hear the Orville's really good. Yeah, I think my friend Matt, like said, Norm MacDonald's in it too. Like, he plays like this weird, like, gelatinous slime or something like that. Oh, nice. I haven't actually watched it because I, I just generally uh, I I don't like Seth MacFarlane. I don't know why he just seems very unlikable to me. I don't like him either. I, I think I think all of the I think most of the people and this is this is sort of the premise of the show. Everybody, I think most people in Hollywood are just narcissistic assholes. Yeah, I, I mean the fact that he released like uh, like three like albums of him like covering like Frank Sinatra songs <laughs> makes me hate him too. Oh yes, yeah. I mean, it's not going to be good. It's it's obviously a vanity project. I mean, it'll mm -hmm. be okay at best. Yeah, it's weird. You know, the weird thing is, is that Seth MacFarlane and I have so much, like, weirdly in common. Because, you know, we're similar age. We remember a lot of the same TV shows. He's really into the Rat Pack and shit like that, and so am I. He likes musical, uh, you know, mo mu movie musicals from, like, the 50s and the 60s, like Singing in the Rain, and he, I think he said his favorite movie is uh, uh, The Sound of Music, which is not my favorite movie, but I do like those types of movies as well. But I still mostly don't like the stuff he does. I mean, I, I, I actually like a lot of the stuff I've seen. I like the movie Ted. The second one I didn't like as much, but, I mean... I mean, it's again the same kind of you know jokes. I mean, mm. even Ted is like, "Oh, look, let's reference Flash Gordon." Flash Gordon's here now. You know, it's like, yeah. right? Yeah, I, Ted is Ted's fine to me. the The best part about Ted to me is uh, Liam Neeson and Ted. <laughs> I don't remember when that. That's how long ago I've seen. I've seen it like once. I liked it, but I think it's I think it's actually in the second one of now that I'm thinking about it. But he he's he works at a gro so this teddy bear works at a grocery, a grocery store. grocer. Yeah, he works in a grocery store. And set, or, uh, Liam Neeson comes up, and he sets down a box of tricks. And he says, uh, I, uh, I've heard... I'm thinking that, of getting into comedies. <laughs> I've heard that this, uh, this cereal is, uh, is uh, meant for children. And he's like, yeah, yeah it's, for, it's for kids. That's what it says in the commercial. Uh, can, I, can I buy this? And he's like, yeah, of course. He's like... I myself am not a child. And he's like, <laughs> he goes, yeah, I, I, I caught that. And he's like, so, so if I purchase this, I can go home. There will be no problem. No one will follow me. And he's like, uh, no, we don't have the budget for that. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, he, he, he looks at him and he kind of leans in and he goes, I won't, uh, I won't forget what you've done for me here today. And then the teddy bear goes, I wish that you would. <laughs> and that's like, that's the funniest scene in the movie. Um, nice. 
but uh, so that, I mean, there are like there's def- there's parts of stuff that he does that I like, and I liked Star Trek: The Next Generation, so I might like, um, you know, uh, this Orville show if if I watched it, but um, I don't know. I just I I generally like I don't watch Family Guy much anymore. Um, I'll I'll catch it every once in a while. My 14 year old daughter really likes it, and I think I think that's kind of part of it too. It's like a time of life type of show yeah for sure i think it came out when we were like 18 or so maybe something like that yeah around there 17 18 something like that like the last year of high school yeah yeah i mean it's it's okay i mean it's not the worst show i've ever seen you know as far as comedies go no. but I mean, it's just kind of like there you know did you watch anything interesting this week i watched a lot of stuff this week um hmm I'm trying to think actually i, I, I would i wanted to bring this up since today is thanksgiving do you have any uh things you do traditionally like thanksgiving wise like movie wise or anything like that um well obviously we watch the t- horrible lions game <laughs> yeah yeah that's true that is uh i mean that'll, that's a good for like a quarter's worth i mean they're gonna get destroyed by uh whoever they play yeah. they're not good the chicago bears yeah oh my oh my god and stafford's not playing so yeah uh trubisky's gonna have his uh a career year i think he's not playing either oh he's not no, I think they have a backup in there. Oh, huh, okay. This is a battle for who wants a better playoff or who wants a better draft pick, basically. I say just trade uh, Stafford, you know, after after the season. Keep the worst of the quarterbacks they have, and then hopefully they'll be the worst team, and then they get Trevor Lawrence, and then they'll uh, ruin his career. Yeah, I, you know, I trading Stafford I, is not necessarily a bad I, I, idea, I don't think. I would I would definitely look into that. I mean, it seems like Bob Quinn can kind of okay pick Pick players, you know. I mean, the guys they had—I can't remember his name. The rookie is it Wilson? He was really good. This the safety. Yeah, Tavon Wilson. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's he's got good players. I mean, surprisingly so. Oh my god, did you watch Monday Night Football yesterday? I mean, three <laughs> days ago. Yes. Wow, that was. Jeez, I mean, I, I can only imagine if we ever. I mean, that's that's the thing. The Ravens, you know, they they obviously were a good team for a long time with mm-hmm. Ray Lewis and Ed Harris and all those, Ed Reed and all those guys. Yep. Ed Harris, the actor. <laughs> Ed, Ed Harris was their coach. He briefly played linebacker, and that was just a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you see Ray Lewis, he looks over at Ed Harris, he's just like there. Like, what? what? Ed Harris, aren't you supposed to be in the Truman Show? We're going to win a Super Bowl. Like, like... <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I won't tell him you stabbed that person either. <laughs> oh, like he's blackmailing <laughs> Ray Lewis because he wants a Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, they were good. Then they kind of, but I mean, they have the same coach. You know, they uh, they basically built the team around Lamar Jackson. And oh mm-hmm. my God, was that insane watching? I mean, he's not only the best runner on the field, the best passer. He's. I have a feeling that if they put him in at uh, head guard, he'd probably do a good job at that. Yeah, no shit. He is an incredibly talented player. Yeah, that's and he's like what year three or two. And that's just mm-hmm. wow. And um, a really yeah, I, a really good decision maker too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he clearly sees the game as well as anybody else on the field, including, you know, the coaches. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I was watching uh, something, which is kind of funny, because it was like this show on ESPN, um, and Dan Orlovsky was, like, you know, commenting on the quarterbacks. I'm like, Dan Orlovsky commenting on how to be a good quarterback is <laughs> not the best fit. That's like uh, that's like uh, Bill Cosby uh, commentating on uh, what to do on a first date. And whether or not you should uh, pull your pants up to look right. at it. like <laughs> yeah, he like he like he showed like every like these t- it was inc- inc- it was crazy like how like tiny these windows of time he had to make a decision and then he made the perfect decision each time he like I don't go like as far as a third quarter he had a perfect quarterback read yeah yeah he's and, then, I, and whenever he got hit by the like whenever he got like not sacked I don't think he got sacked once when I saw but whenever he got hit you know like after the throw he would just bounce right back up it was just ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely. But as far as movies go on on Thanksgiving, every once in a while we'll like once Thanksgiving dinner's over, we might do like a Christmas movie like Elf or something like that. We don't have a like a specific movie that we do every year. I always try to get people to watch Planes, Trains and Automobiles every yeah, I was Thanksgiving. Just say, that's like I think we talked about this before, but as far as I know, that's like the only Thanksgiving themed movie. It's the only one I can think of. I mean, I know there's, I think, I think it's called Home for the Holidays or something like that. It's, if you look at the cover, it looks like a Christmas movie, but then oh, yeah, I, I think, think coming I think home for Thanksgiving. Yeah. 
but yeah, but uh, I mean, obviously, I haven't seen it, and obviously, from the cast, I, I have not much of an inclination to do so. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like John Candy, but I mean, maybe I'll watch it just because it's the only Thanksgiving thing out there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's I, I like playing trains and automobiles, but it's it's another one of those things where if you didn't see it in the eighties, I I don't know. Oh, you know, another one. I I'll be remiss if I don't mention this because my wife loves this movie. Uh, Pieces of April. That's a Thanksgiving movie. That stars uh, a pre-Tom Cruise uh, Katie Holmes. Oh, wow. so it's an older movie. Yeah, it's uh, yeah when she when she actually had an acting career and was trying. Before yeah, I thought she was a good her. actress and every like in the one movie, what is it, The Ice Storm? She's really good in that. Uh yeah, she she was definitely a great. I think she was a really good actress, but uh, she got married to Tom Hanks, and Tom Hanks was like, "Yeah, I don't want you to. Uh, I want you to make and movies she, anymore." And then she got married to Tom Cruise. Yeah. Oh. It probably would have been a lot better if you got married to Tom Hanks. <laughs> oh, did I say Tom Hanks? Yeah, you said you said Tom Hanks at first. And oh, I think that's weird. that that would yeah that would have been. I mean, poor um, poor uh, what's her name? Rita Wilson. Rita Wilson. But but yeah, yeah. Do you think that would I think that would have ruined uh, Tom Hanks' image if he divorced Rita Wilson and married. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because yeah, she's much younger than him. Yeah. Uh, under this side, I looked up uh, Thanksgiving movies. Miracle on 34th Street is somehow listed as a Thanksgiving movie. I've never seen it. It's it's about Santa Claus. Oh, yeah, I know what it's about, but I just haven't seen it. Like, that, it's, how, make... it's not in any way a Thanksgiving movie. This is going to sound ridiculous, but is Jingle All the Way a Christmas movie or a, or a Thanksgiving movie? Because this is about, like, a Black Friday type thing. Yeah, I guess that's an... I mean, I think it's mostly considered a Christmas movie, but I guess that's that's an interesting question because he's... Oh, wait, no. It's not Black Friday because it's... Oh, it's like the day before. Yeah, it's something. like the day before Christmas. He's, he put it off buying the... I didn't get the turbo doll. I've never seen that one, but I maybe I should just for fun. I know that. Uh, let's see. What, oh, I think I'm in. Oh, you know what? That's why What's that? I'm not in. Uh, oh, this is Thanksgiving. I'll let you know. Probably five ish. But uh, she's in another one. Um, it's called. Oh well, there's a Garfield's Thanksgivings on here, and Winnie the Pooh Thanksgiving. Oh. Oh yeah, those don't really count. And I guess the Char- Charlie Brown one, you know. Yeah, yeah, that that would that would make sense. The only thing I really watch is uh, I watch this. There's an episode of uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia mm-hmm. called "The Gang Squashes Their Beef," and that's about. It's like a thing they have all their. It's like a friendsgiving, I guess. Oh, you know, okay. That's a stupid yeah. word. Because like they try and like settle all these grudges. It's a hilarious episode. But yeah, that's like I make sure to watch it every uh, Thanksgiving, and it's on Hulu.com. I don't. Does it? Does the word thanks imply family? I don't get that. I don't know. Why I, do you I have mean, to call it Friendsgiving? Just call it Thanksgiving. I'm sorry your family hates you and you have a bunch of weird friends that uh, eat uh, you know, vegan uh, chicken on uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah, exactly. Eat your fucking tofu and get out of here. Use, you could use the same name. It's okay. We don't, you're not appropriating it. We're not worried about the kind of shit. <laughs> call, it, uh, call it Native American uh, Genocide Day <laughs> and just get it over with. There you go. I mean, why don't we eat venison, I guess, because nobody hunts, but I think that would be my dream, uh, to kill a deer and then eat venison on Thanksgiving one year. Nice. Or a freshly killed turkey, you know, like, hunting-wise. I think they mostly ate seafood on the, on the actual first Thanksgiving. That wouldn't be a shock. I thought I thought there was venison, but I could be wrong. But yeah, I, I don't think I'd really go for seafood. I'm not a big seafood fan. Yeah, it's... Uh, a lot of the stuff they ate, I wouldn't... I mean, who knows? They could have uh, eaten some of their children uh, on Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what, according to Dave Foley, that's what they do in a Canadian Thanksgiving. They eat a uh, eight year old boy. Oh, there you go. Makes sense. Yeah. Dave Foley, who liked one of my tweets. Thank you very much. I don't know if there was as much cannibalism going on in Canada as there was in the United States around that time, but yeah, there was. Yeah, some, I don't know. If you look into the history of it, there was some just absolutely brutal things going on. Yeah, they weren't very thankful. No, no, no. <laughs> Oh, I watched um, the end of the fucking worlds, the season two. I think I told you about that, that my wife and I were kind of like upset that there was a season two, but we watched it and it was fine. Um, And then it ended 
And it kind of also ends in a, a way where they could go to a third season, even though, you know, this kind of graphic novel it's based on, you know, a limited run. That's it. Like they're well beyond the, the source material at this point. Um, and I looked at my wife and I was Which like, is usually that good. Yeah, I know. I looked at my wife and I was like, what did you think? And she was like, I liked it. And I said, do you think they're going to do another season? And she goes, God, I hope not. <laughs> But that's that's the way, you know, and that's where people are getting, I think, because there's so much content out there. I just want it to be done. I don't want yeah, I, 10 I seasons. Like, and I kind of worry when a show I like that, you know, keeps going on beyond where I thought it should have. Like, it's just going to ruin the show at a certain point. You know? Yep, absolutely. Like, I mean, I really like the show Oz, uh, mostly for the nude men. Of course. Um, but, I mean, it, it went on a little longer than I feel it should have. I mean, um, the scenes of male nerd, nudity. Same thing. Oh no, those those were kind of too short. Uh, yeah. in, in all honesty, um, but yeah, the uh, like the, the show Six Feet Under, I thought that was a little long too. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, Game of Thrones went way too long, in my opinion. Yep, well beyond uh, the material that they had. Yeah, what's funny is now that like Game of Thrones is over, nobody ever mentions it. It's like everybody is just so done with Game of Thrones. Yep. I, I have not heard. Although I did listen to a podcast, uh, the Deep into History, but it was actually done before the su- the show was over. Mm-hmm. He had one on the, um, you know, it was like the rise of the Targaryens and that kind of stuff. Pretty, I really like that show. It's really good. Yeah, it is. That's a very good show. Uh, uh, yeah, so. But that's basically all I watched, and it was fine. If you, It's on Netflix. If you liked the first season, you'll probably enjoy this season. They did come up with an interesting angle and an interesting thing to do for the season, so it wasn't a complete waste. It was good. It wasn't as good as the first season, but it was good. But I do hope that they're ne- that it, now it's over. Don't bring it back. There's yeah. no reason to. Just Great. two seasons perfectly encapsulates their story. I I can imagine where they're gonna go from here, and it's fine. Great. Uh but yeah, I mean yeah, that's, only, that's pretty much all I watched. I watched quite a few things. Uh, not, I mean, a lot of them are just things I've already watched. I'm in the stage where I like to watch like shows that I really enjoy over and over. Mm-hmm. Um, the one thing I watched that was new that was pretty interesting was uh, my wife and I watched this uh, special from Vice. Like, I think it was on, hmm, it was on Hulu, I believe. It was like they investigated like uh, hip hop in Russia. Oh, interesting. It was really crazy. It was like uh, it was it, it was my wife made like the perfect analogy that I'm uh, currently forgetting. Oh, no, no, yeah, it was just like the uh, the parental guidance hearings and, uh, you know, the 80s, 90s, you know, with Tipper Gore and all that. Yeah. But they were also beating the people. Oh, nice. And, <laughs> and it was funny. They had, like, this guy who was, like, the Russian minister of, like, culture or music or something. He's like, oh, I would never, you know, adv- I'm not I'm not allowed to advise Putin on these things. And then they, of course, cut to a, uh, <laughs> a videotaped meeting where, he, like, Putin's asking him for advice on, you know, the music. So he, he's just flat out lying. God. Yeah, it was it was pretty interesting. Like uh, they had all these different rappers. Uh, my favorite was uh, his name was Husky. Okay. Or no, maybe it wasn't. No, no, that wasn't Husky. He was like the most popular, and it was really crazy. Like it was really like these these huge concerts that people were attending, and they like turn they would turn the power off to them sometimes. You know, like they, like oh, you're not allowed to play here, and they would just like you know sing it without power and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of it, it actually showed footage of one of my favorite videos, um, which is uh, the first time Metallica plays in Russia. Like the oh my god, it's like the most insane thing. The crowd is like overwhelming. It's like such a cool moment. Like, yeah, I, I occasionally watch that video. There's like a, a guy in like the the army, like you know, on top of people, like you know, giving the double horns and stuff. It's just a real cool video. But yeah, they, this one I can't remember his name, which is going to bother me. But he, he did this song called "Drop the West." Okay. It's all, it's all about like it's about like how great Russia is, but like it was like a kind of parody, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it's the funniest video I've ever seen in my whole life. <laughs> like it's this guy like in New York, he's like just kicking these buildings down. Holy shit! And then he's like on top of the Empire State Building, like humping at one point. <laughs> it was really hilarious. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's. I mean, I watch so much stuff. That's that's the most memorable thing, though. So I would definitely. Vice always has good series. I mean. I love their investigative journalism. I would definitely check out anything from them. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think Vice does a really good job with a lot of the, everything that they do. Yeah, for sure. They should investigate Seth MacFarlane and find out why I don't think he's funny, despite the fact that uh, we're basically <laughs> the same person. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, uh, do we have a commercial to do, Mark? Oh, yeah. Let's uh, let's <laughs> let's do some commercials. Um, so... First of all, uh, 
I want to uh, invite everyone out there. How would you like to suck my balls? Because they are now smooth and clean thanks to Manscaped, as as Mike calls it. What do you call it, Man Groomer? Yeah, Man Groomer. I think that's the porn parody version of it. Could be. Yeah, Manscaped, the, uh, th- secondly, the Lawnmower 2.0. That's correct. Yeah. Came with some special, I mean, the package that we got, It's uh, you could buy it on there. Just use our offer code, uh, it's late fee, right? Yeah, late fee. Yeah, all so caps. Late fee. Late fee. That, oh, it's, it's cap sensitive. Yeah, yeah, it's all caps. Oh, okay. But check that out. Late fee. Uh, you know, twenty percent off. Get the perfect package two point I'm telling you, you know, the the fir- the the thing that's the most important thing is that you need to know. Besides, you know, being able to to manscape yourself is and manscape.com obviously is that it's got deodorant for for your groin which i don't know yeah. why i've never used before but it's because it's the most upsetting part of your pop it just everything gets <laughs> everything gets squished and like there's there's all sorts of fluid always flowing around always flowing around What's that, that area around everything's just a wet mess Jeez. So yeah, I mean, deodorant, you know, for your balls, it's 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 an it's a no-brainer. Yeah, and I mean, as we discussed before, you'll save thousands of dollars a year on a shampoo for the pubes. Absolutely. I mean, the first if you're if you're anything like Demi Moore, the first uh, the first month alone <laughs> will, will pay for itself. <laughs> I think she needs a like horse of that main horse and main uh, shampoo. Yeah, exactly. About three bottles of that each each time she showers. <laughs> probably, probably. I think she just sits on a big thing of shampoo. <laughs> she's instead of like a, a loofah in there, she's got one of those uh, those big horse brushes. <laughs> oh yes. God. <sighs> Everything was bigger in the eighties. Bushier too. Yep. Uh, so well, you know, I mean, she she probably smuggled many pounds of cocaine <laughs> that, uh, yeah. in that tangle. Emilio, that's where Emilio Estevez is to this day. Yeah, exactly. He lost his career there. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so go to manscaped.com, Use our promo code late fee. Get twenty percent off. And uh, be happy. So, you know, this holiday season, I'm telling you, buy it. If you're a woman out there listening to us, buy it for your 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 husband or boyfriend. If you are a man, buy it for yourself or your lover. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure women can use it, too. I don't see why not. Groom, groom yourselves up, ladies. Just write W-O at the beginning and you're all good to go. Exactly. But yeah, manscaped.com. Check that out. And then uh, we've got a, a promo here from another show on the network. Uh, listen to the to, uh, to uh, oh, it's Pot Askew, Mike. They uh, they cover. Oh, right. They're newer, aren't they? Yeah, they're one of the newer shows on the network. Then they cover. They they don't just do Kevin Smith movies or 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 view Askew universe films, but they they kind of stuff tangentially related to it too. Basically, you know, anything that's kind of in the spirit of Kevin Smith stuff. So, uh, yeah, so I saw one of them, like on their Twitter, they like actually took pictures of the quick South. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. That's awesome. Uh, but take a listen to them. Welcome everybody to the Potter Skew podcast. I am. Whoa, 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 dude. This is our promo, not the show. I'm Rico. Oops. My bad. I'm CJ. We're the host of the Potter Skew podcast. We are fans of pretty much anything and everything pop culture, including movies, TV shows, books, video games, comics, music, and of course, Kevin Smith. Now, while we do keep our fingers on the pulse of Sal and Bob, he certainly doesn't need our help in promoting him. You got that right. We do our own thing with inspiration from the man and his mantra of why not. We've got stories from celebrities we've interviewed, theories of our own for certain movies, and we usually have a great debate on almost anything. We also do commentaries on movies. Sometimes we ask our fans what they want to watch with us. So, if you love the timber of our vocal cords and you want to watch a movie at the same time, give us a listen. Stay tuned every Monday. There's always something new. And if you've been good this year, we may even give you some bonus episodes from time to time. So be good, subscribe, and enjoy Pot Askew. Proud members of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. 
So check out uh, Potaskew. They do some good work over there. Uh, I'm trying to think if I watched anything else this week, Mike. I mean, I pretty much just kind of bummed around YouTube and then, uh, you know, finished the end of the fucking world. Um, I watched an episode of 90210 from the first season so that I can... <laughs> So that we can record a 90210 episode for Retro Late Fee. Nice. Do you have a, I know you were talking about doing some some stuff with, with your wife. Uh, have you have you uh, decided on anything there yet? Yeah, it's still a work in progress. We, uh, I mean, she actually just started a new job this week. So the schedule-wise, it'll probably be easier to do because she'll have the weekends off for the most part. Okay. But yeah, there's quite a few shows that we like um, that, you know, I think... Unfortunately, a lot of them, they're already podcast for, so I don't really want to, you know, retread the same ground. Right. I'm like those people ripping us off our uh, house podcast. Yeah, that's right. There's some, somebody decided to, to, uh, ape off of our success and do a house podcast as well. Good, good for you. Good for you people. We're coming (laughs) for you. Jeez. Awesome. Ed Harris. (laughs) Yeah. Ed Harris. Ray Lewis. (laughs) The whole team. (laughs) Uh, yeah, that's, a, that's about all i have for this week all right me too well we will uh we'll see you next week uh as always tell a friend about the show thank you for telling friends thank you for writing in oh i've got so a couple a few of you have written uh questions i don't actually have them pulled up right now but next week we i will do uh some questions next week i will read some some questions that we have in the email on the air and we will uh we will do that next week um so keep yeah, so if you have any other questions get them in before then yeah keep right keep writing questions in if you if you've uh got them i'll do it we'll do a, a little section about of uh email questions next week um that's, it's uh, massive late fee at gmail.com yeah that's right uh and then you know massive late fee everywhere uh twitter instagram all that stuff we will uh we'll see you next week bye see you next time